church this is the day that the lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it if you don't mind let's take a few moments and go before the throne of grace in prayer heavenly father lord we just want to say thank you thank you thank you god lord we just honor you today lord you are great you are wonderful we magnify your name we lift you up on today we cannot say enough about your goodness your grace and your mercy 
Lord, we just simply ask, God, that you be with us in our service today. Uh, touch somebody's heart, God. Let them know that you are God and you are God alone, Lord. Open up the mysteries of your word to them today as they receive the word from the man of God today. And Lord, continue to bless each and every one of us and protect us, God, even in these days. We need your protection because if you don't do it, it can't be done. We need you, God. These things we ask in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank God. Amen. Amen. All right, Refuge family, it's time for our faith declarations. We've been saying this every Sunday because sometimes you got to rehearse and rehash what it is you believe. So it's right here on your screen. Let's go ahead and say this together. For all I've been through and with all my Savior has done, I declare he's bringing it all together for me in 2021. Oh, bless God, it's time to pass the peace right now. That, that newness, that wholeness that you feel having rehearsed and rehashed what you believe, it's time to share that with somebody. You can drop an encouraging comment, a welcoming message to somebody in the comment section of whatever platform you're watching. You can shoot a text message to somebody anywhere in the world and invite them to come and worship right here with us in this space. It's time to pass the peace.
God and our Father, we come to you in this moment thanking you for all that you are, thanking you for all that you do. We give you glory, honor, and praise for what it means to be brought together by Jesus Christ, saved by your grace through his blood. And we have come to this moment to hear directly from you. So Lord, I pray that uh, you might give us the impartation of your heart, your spirit in this moment. Rescue me from me, use me for your glory, that I might communicate your holy word with supernatural power to the end that some soul would be saved, some life transformed, somebody convinced of what you're up to in our lives. Lord, we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, I'm still uh, on this track of uh, us working through uh, the, the prep steps for moving forward, working our way back toward in-person worship. Uh, we're going to continue doing online worship, but we're also uh, got several irons in the fire for how we do that. But I want to remind you of a truth um, that that the church is not a building that we are the church. According to first Corinthians six and 19, we are the place where the spirit of God dwells and where people can come to connect with God. They can come to us, not to a building, not to an address, not to a place. Um, because we, we are we make up what it is that the church is about, that we are the place where God dwells. First uh, Peter 2 and 5 says it like this in the New King James translation. He says, you also as living stones are being built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Never forget that uh, church isn't the place that you go. Church is the people and the movement and the family of faith that you and I have been brought into through our relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, that, that we make up what the church is, that we are this place, we are the location. Uh, Paul even says it like this in Ephesians 2 and 21 in the New Living Translation, that we are carefully joined together in Him becoming a holy temple for the Lord. He said, he'll say it again in uh, 4 and 16 in, same, in Ephesians, that we were made to fit together perfectly, that, that we're these living stones that we make up as we fit together, as we connect with each other through our connection with Jesus Christ. We are the temple. We are the place where the Spirit of God dwells. We are the church. We are the people of God who've been made to fit together perfectly to build up this place where God shows up and where God can be glorified, where God can be worshiped. Uh, and so I need you to know and recognize that even while we're looking for a place and an address and a building, we can't forget that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, that we are the church. We are the people of God brought together in relationship through Jesus Christ to be that place, to be the people, to be the movement, to be the, the energy, the vibe behind what God wants to do for others in the earth. And so even as we move toward this, this in-person corporate worship, we have to recognize that it's going to be what we bring to it. We are going to make up what happens in that worship experience. And if we aren't already being prepared to worship, then nothing will happen in that space and in that place. 
And so listen, we've been talking about how when in-person corporate worship has been disrupted for a period of time, there have to be steps of preparation that have to be taken in order to move forward toward that public worship. That there are some expectations that God um, uh, sets in motion uh, in order to bring about for when that in-person worship happens. And so listen, recognize that, that we are the living stones, that we are the temple. And I'm reminded of the story uh, where Solomon was building the temple. Now remember, David had wanted to build the temple, but God would not allow him. Uh, so David set up all of the things and all of the necessary relationships and building projects and building materials so that Solomon himself would be the one who would build the temple. So they were still worshiping in areas and in places near their homes, but there was no place to have corporate worship while the temple was being built. And as I thought about that story and as I studied that story, I came across uh, uh, through a relationship with my pastor. I, I came across this verse that I don't think I'd ever seen before that I took for granted. Uh, but look, what's, look what happens in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7. Solomon is building the temple. It's a seven-year process. And the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter 6, verse 7, And the temple, when it was being built, was built with stone finished at the quarry, so that no hammer or chisel or any iron tool was heard in the temple area while it was being built. Watch this. Now remember, I just pointed out to you that in 1 Peter, we are the living stones that make up the temple. But the Bible says that when Solomon was building the temple, they didn't work on the stones at the place of the temple. Instead, the, in order to, to comply with some other Old Testament directives, Solomon made sure that the stone that was going to be used to make up the walls of the temple itself, he, the Bible says that the stones were finished at the quarry so that there was no sound of construction or the placing together of construction out of reverence for that place where the temple would be built. So check this out. Uh, if you ever get a chance to go to Jerusalem, and I, and I, I suggest that you do if you can, uh, that, that uh, you'll notice that all throughout the city there's these big limestones that are used. Uh, you'll still see some that are uh, from ruins uh, from, from the time of the Roman period. But these big limestones were used and they had to be cut and fit in order to make up the walls of the, of the city, of the temple, uh, various things. And, but Solomon made sure that none of those stones would be worked on at the area where the temple would be. Instead, the stones were quarried underneath the city, according to 1 Kings 5 and 17, and that they were, they were worked on outside of the place where worship would be. <laughs> Here's what I'm trying to prove to you, that the stones were prepared before they even got to the house of God. Somebody already sees where I'm going. That the stones were worked on, they were prepared, they were quarried, they were chiseled, they were taken care of away from the place of worship so that when they were brought to the place of worship, they simply were fit together and they moved on. <laughs> Watch this, that, that there's this idea that they were quarried. They had to be dug out of where they were. They, they had to be cut from the stone uh, underneath the city that they were a part of in order to be prepared, in order to fit into the plan for what the house of God would be. Uh, the, the reason why the, the, the text talks about no iron tool, because that goes back to Exodus 20 and 25, when the, there was a principle that when building an altar to God, there should be no iron tools. The reason being that at that time in Exodus, uh, the Hebrews, the Israelites did not have the iron technology or the tools, but Canaanite culture did. And so God said, I don't want you mixing the things that should belong to me in my worship with the things that belong to the world and the pagans. And so the idea was that he didn't want there to be a mixing of the ways of the world with the worship of the one true God. And so uh, Solomon made sure that he worked through that, 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 that premise or that idea. And so the Bible says that there were no stone tools, no iron tools used on the stones. There was no sound of hammer or chisel in the temple area while the temple was being built. Now check this out. That meant that all of the hammering, all of the chiseling, all of the excavating, all of the shaping happened away from the place where worship would take place. And if you and I were to be honest about it, over the last 15, 16 months, 
God has been doing some things away from the place of worship on each one of us to hammer us and to chisel us and to shape us and to polish us and to square us away so that when he brings us back together in corporate worship, that we will be able to actually fulfill what Ephesians 2 is talking about, that we would be fit together that we would, be, we would be shaped by our experiences, hammered and polished by the things that God has taken us through and the things that we've seen him do in, and lo- in our lives and to provide for us and to surround us with his love, that we have, he's been using these months to square us away and preparing us to be useful, preparing us to fit together. Why? So that, the Bible says, so that there would not be the sound Uh, The Message Bible says it like this, that there would be no noise from all of the fitting and shaping and hammering together. God has been working on each one of us over the last few months while we were away from the place of worship to prepare us to bring us back together again so that when we get to an in-person corporate worship, He's been he's been working on us. He's been polishing us. He's been preparing us so there won't be any noise, no confusion, no problems with us fitting together perfectly when it's time to get back together. And so I need to declare to somebody that look back at what God has been doing in your life. You may not have been able to come to a place to worship, but God's been shaping you. God's been polishing some things up in your life. He, he's been hammering and chiseling away at some issues and some, some selfishness and some, some bad viewpoints. And he's been making you, forcing you and I to face ourselves and to recognize there's some stuff in us that if, we, if he left it there, it wouldn't be good for us to be back in worship with each other yet. And so he's been forcing us to get, to get ourselves together away from worship so that when he brings us together to the place of worship, the thing he's preparing for us while he's preparing us for the thing so that when we come together, there won't be noise, there won't be confusion, there won't be church mess, that there won't be issues with us fitting together perfectly as the living stones that make up the house of God, that make up the place of worship. And so I need you and I to begin to recognize that God's up to something. God's been trying to shape us and polish us and sand away some of the issues that we have had while we're away from the place of worship because he's got great plans for what he's gonna do when he brings us together and fits us together perfectly. And so I need you to give God praise for the shaping, for the chiseling, and the preparation, because he's been getting the stones ready for where he's gonna put the stones back together again in corporate worship. And so over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be dealing with the things that we need to do to prepare to come back together for corporate worship. Listen, we're close. Uh, we've got several irons in the fire, several different ways that whatever God, uh, whatever door God opens, we'll be ready to move so that we come back to corporate worship. But we've got to take some steps of preparation. We've got to be ready. So I'm going to be talking through some protocols. I'm going to be uh, issuing some challenges to all of us so that we can start getting ready for when God opens that door. We'll be ready to run through it and there won't be any noise. No, no, no chiseling, no hammering. Uh, we're going we're gonna to let him work on us to get us ready, to keep us from having to get ready for when he opens that door. Can I pray for us? Father, we thank you. We bless you. We magnify your great name. You're so amazing and so wise that you've had a plan while we've been scrambling and while we've been being hammered and chiseled on and, and shaped up and squared away. Uh, you've had a plan all along. You're looking forward to the day when you want to bring us back together and fit us together perfectly. But God, we recognize that you're using this time to prepare us. And so, Lord, I pray that you would soften our hearts. I pray that you would make us honest with ourselves and with you. I pray, oh God, that we would allow the shaping and chiseling and polishing process 
to have its perfect work so that when we come back together again, there won't be any noise, there won't be any confusion, there won't be any steps that we need to take, but to allow you to fill us and to fill the place of worship where you will be glorified, where no confusion can exist, and where the kingdom of God can move forward without hindrance or harm. Lord, we love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, he's getting the stones ready for the place of worship. Let's see what he does over the next few weeks. Hey, Refuge, Pastor Jay here, just giving you an update on where things stand with our building search and process and what we're planning to do. Um, uh, we are continuing to diligently search. Matter of fact, we're in some negotiations right now uh, on a property, and I'll let you know how those things go. Um, but as God would have it, uh, who knew that the only places in all of Miami-Dade County where the commercial real estate square footage would be more expensive than in Homestead would be downtown Miami and South Beach. Who knew? Um, so with that being said and with our long range plan of being able to have our own place one day and with the financial team putting together a long range plan for how we get there, um, we have budgeted how much we want to be able to spend at the next spot that we go to. There's a certain cap that we're not willing to go over. Uh, and so with that, that's going to limit the size of what it is that we're looking for uh, in the next place that we're in. So with that and with the, all the other issues going on with COVID restrictions and this new Delta variant that's happening, um, I need to let you know that wherever we will be, uh, whether it's this place we're negotiating, negotiating on now or someplace else, more than likely we will prioritize worship space, but that means we won't have room for children's ministry and children's programming, at least initially. Um, and I know that's kind of uh, disappointing for many. Uh, I know I'm kind of bummed about it, but um, we're, we're trying to do the best we can with being stewards of God's money and with the long range plan that we have to own our own home, our own church home one day. Uh, and so with that being said, you need to recognize, uh, just like God had to tell Israel at one point in time, he said, don't, don't despise small beginnings. Wherever we go into, it's going to be a little bit smaller, but the point is that we'll be able to worship together. Uh, barring that, and if some other things don't come, we've got another iron in the fire of being able to go back to uh, in-person corporate worship, whether we utilize some other kind of facilities, whether that's um, motel meeting space, hotel meeting space or something like that. Uh, we're, we're looking at various venues to get us back there. But as we prepare, uh, it's, it's important that I outline all of the guidelines for what's gonna happen in when we resume our in-person worship services. And I know that there's all different kinds of levels of beliefs and even convictions on the way things should be. Uh, I know many of us are ready to return to in-person worship and get to hugging and, and slapping each other on the back as soon as possible. Others may not be as ready to get all of that done. And I, I understand both of those are completely valid uh, viewpoints. Uh, and so we will continue our online worship services uh, regardless of what we do next and whatever the in-person worship looks looks like. We're going to continue with this. Um, and so we will we'll make sure that we have this in place because um, one of the things that's going to be happening, especially with the, the threat of this new Delta variant uh, that has that has COVID cases rising in Florida, in some cases in Florida faster than in other places in the country. Um, we're gonna ask that those who want to worship with us in person, uh, we want you to keep your safety and the safety of others uh, at the forefront of our minds. So, so that means that uh, if, if you have not been vaccinated, uh, we're gonna ask that you will continue to worship with us online. Um, because we want to make sure that we we do as much as we can to to be a blessing and to be to to be a safe place for everybody to grow one step closer to Jesus Christ every single day um, even with that we will continue with masks and some other things and so I'll give you the full protocol and what's gonna happen in another video and in, in weeks to come uh, we'll be posting it on our website as well but I want to let you know that the search is continuing. We are looking to do that. And even if we don't, we may have some interim things that we do so that we can get back to a level of having uh, in-person worship, at least on campus, while we continue with our online campus as well. All right, listen, I've already bored you enough with the details, but I'll keep giving you more as we get closer. I need you to know that I love you and there's nothing that you can do about it. 
Hey, listen, it's offering time in the house. It's time to bless God with our gifts of tithe, offering, or love offering. Remember that even as we give, there's four different modes and methods in which we give, but we always give out of our generosity, out of our gratefulness, out of our covenant relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I'm asking that you would worship God in giving. I'm so grateful to those of you who uh, have put that God so much at the forefront of your lives that you've even uh, already set up the automated giving that as soon as your paycheck hits your direct deposit, it's already been set up that you bless God with your tithes. And I thank those of you who've done it so much. I also want to offer a challenge to some other folks that this, that maybe giving isn't the, the thing that comes up first for you. It's not just the best way for you to connect. Maybe you have issues with churches asking for money. I get that, but I'm asking you to grow in a step of faith and that you would trust God. God even says it in Malachi 3. He says, prove me, test me, and see if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings you wouldn't have room enough to receive. And so let's prepare our hearts and our minds, as well as our gifts, to worship God in giving. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We bless you in the name of Jesus for all that you have done for us. Thank you for the way that you've been preparing these stones before we even get to the place of worship. And now, God, I pray that as we take this time to pause and to center on you and center you in our lives and in, in our worship, I ask, oh God, that you would bless each gift that you would bless each giver, that you would expand them. I pray that you would blow their minds with your faithfulness, that as they sow into your kingdom, let them receive the bounty that comes from walking in covenant with the living Lord Jesus Christ. And it's to him and it's through him and for him that we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God in giving. Well, listen, I need you to know that I praise God for you and I praise God for this time uh, that you've taken to worship with us. And I need to speak specifically to all of the married couples, all of the married couples. Listen, I want you to get excited. I want you to go ahead and start registering for our marriage retreat that's coming up in October. I believe that God has given me a word uh, through all that we have gone through, uh, sometimes during lockdown when we had to get on each other's nerves. I believe God has given me a word and, and the other speakers who will be a part on how to make sure that we build marriages that will last. And so I am challenging you uh, to invest in your marriage, to invest in what God wants to bring out of this covenant relationship that he's blessed you with. Uh, you've already seen how you can do that. You can go to our website, you can do that. But I want you to be ready to join us uh, in October for our marriage retreat that God would help us go to the next level in our marriages. All right. Well, listen, I need you to know that God is about to give all of us a great week. I believe that God is up to something big and in something major in somebody's life. And I can't wait to hear the story. Can I pray for us? Father, we bless you. We magnify you. We thank you now for all that you have said, all that we've seen, all that we've sung as we have reconnected with you. And now, God, I pray that you would give us joy everlasting, joy overflowing, that as we walk into this next week, may we experience closeness with you like never before. May we experience walking in our purpose with a power that we've never had before and do it to the end that you'll get all the glory, all the honor and all the praise and all the credit that's due your name. For we love you and we bless you in Jesus name. Amen. May the peace of God go with you. May you walk in power, prosperity, and peace. I love you, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Can't wait to see you next week.